I've got a first five pick, but I'm going with the first five total, which you know I typically don't like to do. I usually just like to pick a side here. Uh, we win ours yesterday, which was, again, a run line full nine inning play, which, again, is an unorthodox play for me. I'm trying to find the edge, and the edge for me here is the first five over four and a half. We've got Steven Matz against Tommy Henry. I really did want to target Tommy Henry coming into this start. We actually played Tommy Henry first five when Arizona played the Chicago Cubs last week. We got away with one a little bit. We were really just fading Kyle Hendricks in that game. Both pitchers were very bad. Turns out Tommy Henry won. We won our bet. Now, here's the difference here. As much as I want to bet against Tommy Henry, the Cubs really good against lefties. And, you know, we're coming into a situation where St. Louis, Tommy Henry, that matchup, not very good in terms of producing runs. But I'm really playing the fade of both Tommy Henry, because I don't think he's a great pitcher, and Steven Matz. We know Arizona is very good against lefties, and we know Steven Matz hasn't really gone long into games at all. He's not missing a lot of bats. I think these are two pedestrian pitchers that are likely going to get touched up through five innings. I kind of liked the over at plus money, or at least at even money, for the full game of over eight and a half, because I don't really think either of these bullpens are very good. But long story short, I'm going to target both of these pitchers, and I'm going to take the over four and a half at, I believe, yeah, minus 110. So I'll take that one tonight. You hate to keep picking on a guy, but look, at the end of the day, we're trying to make money. And why stray from winners when Corbin has an 8.06 ERA, 1.97 whip? That means he's allowing almost two base runners per inning. If you give up that kind of traffic to the Dodgers, you are absolutely going to get pummeled. Uh, remember, I talk about familiarity a lot. Once a team sees a guy, if they have a quick turnaround and see him again, it's much, much better for the hitters because they just saw his stuff and they just got used to it and they know exactly what to expect. Well, the Dodgers just saw Corbin last week, April 16th, and they scored five runs and six in the third innings against him on nine hits. I think that they will feast so much better this time, but still, that's really good. And they got to six runs in that game anyway. Uh, the Dodgers had lost seven out of nine not too long ago, just a few days ago, but feasted on Sunday against the Mets, day off Monday for travel. I think they're going to start getting back on track here. It's a good spot against Corbin. So almost any of the offensive plays there you might come up with, maybe a Mookie Betts prop. Uh, I would love that as well, but I'm just going to go with the Dodgers team total. Also, I'm going to keep riding the, the White Sox, and that is the White Sox to lose and to get crushed and to be humiliated. They lost 7 nothing to the Twins last night. The Twins were 7-13, and hitting less than 200 as a team going into that game, and they won 7 nothing. That's how bad the White Sox are. Uh, they're 3-19. and Only five of their losses have been by one run. Uh, so if you take those out and the three wins, 14 of their 22 games they've lost by multiple runs. So I'm going to play the run line here. Uh, on the Twins to win by multiple runs. Pablo Lopez on the hill for the Twins. He's had one bad outing that's kind of messed with his ERA a little bit, but he was great last time out against the Orioles. The Orioles have one of the best offenses in baseball. The White Sox have essentially a triple, maybe double A offense right now. So Lopez is going to be great in this one. If you want to look at Lopez props, go ahead. The White Sox average 1.96 runs per game. I did not speak. They average 1.96 runs per game. Uh, I did not misspeak, I mean. I misspoke there. Wow, <laughs> terrible. Uh, uh, on the other on uh, the other end, Eric Fetty for the White Sox on the hill. He actually has a three point one zero ERA, but he's been incredibly lucky. If you dig into his peripherals, uh, the Twins' offense had been awful before last night, but they scored seven runs. They got it going. Fetty's due for a backslide, so I like a decent number of Twins runs. Very few White Sox runs. Multiple run win for the twins. See, yeah, the Houston Astros have been horrible this season so far. I, I don't I'm trying to remember what the record is. It's like 7 and 16 or 13 whatever they're at this year. It's been really poor. But one area that they always seem to excel in is hitting left-handed pitching well. They are still third right now in Major League Baseball in weighted on base average against left-handed pitching and weighted runs created plus. I want to pick on Jordan Wicks just a little bit. I love the kid. Went to Kansas State University. That's where I went to school. Big fan. Uh, I don't think this is a great matchup, though, when he's at home in a win day. So we've got winds blowing out at Wrigley, the place where it matters the most in Major League Baseball. He is essentially a two-pitch pitcher when he's facing right-handed hitters. He is a lefty. He only throws two pitches to righties. It's a fastball and a changeup. He's thrown his changeup 85 times this year. 84 of the 85 have been to right-handed hitters. We know this Astros team is one that is very analytically sound. They know this information. They will be sitting on those exact two pitches. It will not take much 
to hit a ball out of Wrigley Field tonight in these conditions. I think this is a good bounce back opportunity. Uh, so I like the Astros here. I think they're going to get after Wicks just a little bit. And I think this is a great spot to back them uh, in a pretty strong hitting environment tonight.